I care about safety for a lot of reasons. Um, so I think that the, the incident that really kind of got my attention focused on safety in the first place was when I was a graduate student at Caltech. Um, so I was a second year grad student when Sherry Sanji at uh, UCLA died from that terrible TBULI accident. Um, and then when I was a postdoc, uh, I was involved in a really terrible lab accident actually. Um, and that just really left a very deep impression, uh, both uh, literally and figuratively. So my name is Ian Tonks. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry here at the University of Minnesota. Ten days after I started my postdoc, actually, so it was very early on in the process, um, I was doing a reduction of a chlorophosphine to make a primary phosphine using lithium aluminum hydride. And it was one of these incidents that was a little bit uh, unpredictable. Like, you look at the reaction, there was nothing in the literature that would have um, a priori made you worry that this was a bad idea. And I had done the reaction and worked it up and I was getting ready to distill it. And when I distilled, when I set up the distillation apparatus, um, I left it overnight and I came back the next morning. I went into the lab just to kind of check on how things were going in my hood. And as soon as I leaned down to look into the hood, the distillation apparatus uh, detonated uh, in my face, basically. And so my entire right side was just completely covered um, with glass fragmentation. I lost about a liter of blood. Um, because a, a chunk took, a, a, I guess, a small piece of my neck. Um, I had bullet wounds in both of my arms. Um, I wasn't unconscious, and so I got up and I, I walked to our student office. And so there was another student um, in the lab at that point in time. We had one of those fishbowl setups, so you could actually see um, into the lab from the office. And so, you know, I'm kind of like waving at the other student. Um, and they did the right thing, and they instantly called uh, the paramedics to come get me. Um, another student from the lab next to us came in and helped me put out the fire that was taking place in my hood while I tried to stanch the bleeding from my hands, arms, um, and neck. Uh, the paramedics got there in about uh, four minutes. Um, and they said, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, if people hadn't done the right thing at the right time, um, things would have gone south uh, a lot quicker, for sure, in that case. So, you know, in that case, the response was excellent. Um, and it's because everyone kind of knew what they needed to do. Um, that I was able to make it out without any serious long-lasting damage. I did think that I was working safely at the time. Um, so when I was setting up this reaction, I was working with lithium aluminum hydride, which is a reagent that is relatively dangerous in the grand scheme of things. And I think that a lot of people don't appreciate how unsafe that chemical is. Um, and so when I set up the reaction for the first time, even though I was following a literature prep, I scaled it down um, from where I started. And I lucked out that I scaled it down in that case, um, because if I'd done it at full scale, even worse things probably would have happened. So I had scaled down the reaction because I knew the reagents that I was working with were dangerous. Um, I had set up a blast shield for when I was going to distill uh, the reaction. I had my safety goggles on. Um, but it's one of these situations where just small decisions uh, end poorly for you. So in this case, um, you know, when I walked to my hood in the first place, uh, I'm tall. And so in order for me to see things at hood level, I kind of have to crouch down a little bit. And so what happened when this thing exploded was I was leaning down a little bit. I didn't have my head in the hood, but you know, I'd, I'd taken my head from kind of normal level um, a little bit lower in that case. And I was also off to the side of where this blast shield was set up for the distillation. And so while the blast shield caught kind of the direct um, uh, impact of the glass, you know, some stuff came off to the side, which is where I happened to be uh, positioned at the time, and that's why I still uh, got a lot of damage as a result of that. So, you know, I, I feel like I'd taken a lot of the right precautions. We were thinking about uh, the reaction and the potential things that could have gone wrong, um, but, you know, I don't think that from an engineering perspective we were fully there where we needed to be. You know, we didn't have a full wraparound setup for it. You know, I leaned my head down because I'm too tall to work in the hood, and everything was at hood level. So those sorts of things kind of added up uh, to a worst case scenario. After I got back from the hospital, uh, I actually went to work the next day, uh, which sounds like one of those like hardcore chemists doing stuff, um, but that really wasn't the purpose for it. Um, the reason why I went back the next day was because uh, when I saw the student that went to go call 911, she was sheet white with terror. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that um, you know everyone could see that I was at least to some degree okay and was going to get through this, and did, so they didn't have like you know some crazy idea that things had gone off the rails and I was going to be, you know, out for a long time. Um, my postdoc advisor was actually incredibly supportive about the accident, which I found to be really helpful. So we had a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings to kind of talk through um, what it was going to be like going back into the lab. 
Um, we had meetings with uh, the safety professionals at the University of Wisconsin uh, to kind of discuss at the, in postmortem how this accident happened. Um, and we also had a group meeting that was kind of dedicated to try and figure out what exactly went wrong. So there wasn't a lot of blame, which I really appreciated. So that was very much um, on the bottom of people's minds. And so they were more concerned about my safety and well-being uh, than they were about placing blame. And I think that's incredibly important. Um, additionally, I was really uh, uh, motivated to publish a safety note in CNE News about this because this is a procedure that in, in the lit looks totally fine. Um, but clearly is not totally fine. Um, and so my postdoc advisor was very supportive about this. So we wrote a letter to c &E. They published it as a safety note. Um, and you know, that was a little bit tough to do at first because there is some level of embarrassment when you have an accident uh, like this. You know, whether you are to blame or not, I think that deep down you always feel like to some degree you failed um, as a chemist. Um, it's certainly not true, but I think that it's very difficult to get over uh, that mindset. When students join my group, uh, day one, uh, we, have a, we have a little sit-down chat about safety being the number one priority. And they get to see physically the goggles that I had on during my accident. So I keep them in my office as a constant reminder of uh, the safety initiative. There's two really big things that uh, I like to emphasize uh, with my group and also when I have, whenever I interact with other people. Uh, the first one is goggles. So the lesson that was impressed by me early that, again, saved my sight, was that as soon as you set up in a lab, no matter what lab it is, uh, putting your goggles on is a really, really good idea. Um, even if you're working in an environment where you, know, you feel like things are relatively low risk. You know, I walk into a biology lab now. I get physically uncomfortable if I don't have my goggles on because that's the response that we should have. Um, it should be second nature to do those sorts of things, like breathing, uh, in my opinion. The other thing that I really uh, impress upon people is having an appreciation for the reagents that you're working with. Um, a lot of the chemicals that we work with, especially in the organometallic community, are very high energy. Um, and I think that over time, we get complacent about working with these. And beyond that, I think that it's kind of my responsibility to take a step back every now and then and reevaluate what we're doing um, and make sure that we're thinking more about the big picture of safety um, on a regular basis. So we recently started working with azides in my, azides in my research group um, and those are known uh, detonants. So you have to be careful about working with them. Um, and I think that I, I need to lead by example in that case. So I bring up safety regularly um, and I make sure that my students feel comfortable talking about safety. So if we, um, as professors, can kind of foster an environment where uh, that dialogue is regular and normal, I think that's the most important step that we can take uh, to start with for safety. The biggest problems really occur, I think, when we start to get complacent about the chemistry that we're doing. Um, and this may happen on a, on a student timeline, so you've been working with a chemical for, you know, six months, eight months, a year. Um, or it could work across generations. So the student before you worked on a project in this specific way, and so you're working on it in that specific way. And then the next student is doing the same thing. Um, and I think that some of the logic for some of the safety considerations might get lost along the way. Right? Or you change something slightly as you go along and it turns into a game of telephone. So where something starts off as being a really well thought out procedure, uh, nine months later, or two students later, for example, uh, it's no longer uh, a safe procedure to be doing anymore. Right? And so I think that it's a really good idea to reevaluate why you're doing things the way that you're doing them. And also, in the same line, you know, take a critical look at the, the literature that's out there. Right? So going back to my, my safety accident, you know, I followed a procedure that was published and on the surface, it looks totally fine. But in retrospect, I think there were a couple of things that we could have identified that would have made this to be a particularly um, you know, risky reaction to run in the first place. But because this had kind of crossed you know, generational lines, this has crossed multiple iterations of synthesis, um, something was lost along the way. Right? And so the more you can reevaluate, and the more frequently you do it, the better off you're going to be.